Welcome to my 8K Q&A. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, let's get started. Thank you so very much. The channel has just hit 8 thousand subscribers and just saying that out loud uh feels pretty crazy i never thought uh this many people would want to check out the content uh that i was making uh you know uh it, it just floors me that barely two years in we're already to eight thousand subscribers uh just last july last year in july we hit one thousand subscribers uh so to basically hit uh, 7,000 subscribers in a year is just incredible, and I am so thankful for each and every single one of you. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I'm just sitting here kind of at a loss for words right now. Uh, so all I can do is say thank you. I'm going to throw it together, a little jam here on the OPZ, and uh, then I'm going to do a little, and then I'm going to do a little Q&A. Uh, a few days ago, I asked you to submit some questions for me. Uh, and you did. You came up with some good ones. So, uh, yeah, we'll get into those in just a second. But first, let's jam. Okay, so uh, let's get into these questions here. So, uh, PBB Beats says, how do you record your sound? Uh, and it's pretty simple. I record all of my audio into the Zoom LiveTrack L12, uh, which is a wonderful 12 channel uh, mixer slash audio recorder slash audio interface. It really does everything here at the channel. Uh, it's a major purchase that I made back in, I think, May. Uh, and uh, it completely transformed how I do my recordings here. Uh, before, I would record into my Zoom H5, and I could only record up to four inputs because it has um, an eighth inch stereo line in and then two quarter inch line ins, um, both uh, mono. And uh, now I record all of my audio into my Zoom uh, LiveTrack L12, 
which uh, has, like I said, 12 inputs, and uh, actually two pairs of those inputs are uh, stereo in, so I can uh, record things like the MPC, or the model cycles, or the circuit tracks when I had that. It just makes everything really convenient. My microphone always stays plugged in to the first or second channel, and uh, when I need to record something, it's as easy as just clicking record and recording straight to the SD card. I can take it right from there and edit on the computer. Um, it's also great for the live shows because we can route all the audio into it. It's got five different headphone outputs. So everybody in the crew uh, gets their own mix and can have what they want. So Oliver can just have the uh, backing tracks um, without having to hear me on the drums. I can have, uh, you know, backing tracks a little louder than the drums so I can stay in tune. Lady Freebeat can have a nice mix of what the audience is hearing so she can monitor that. Uh, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Zoom Live Track L12. A uh, little expensive, I think I bought mine for 600 US dollars, but totally worth it for what it has done for the channel. Will Lewis says, what is your complete musical background? And uh, I don't know if we have time for that, but I will tell you uh, the gist of it. Uh, so I started drumming when I was in the fourth grade, when I was nine years old. And uh, I just completely fell in love with the instrument a couple years before that. And uh, the school I was at offered band in fourth grade. And I was lucky enough that I had a wonderful teacher who happened to be a drummer himself. Um, and I was able to take lessons from him for a long time. And I was able to stay with him through uh, 10th grade uh, when I transferred to a different school. And then started forging my own path. I discovered Rush and uh, Neil Peart and his teachings. And that's when I really took a compositional approach uh, to songwriting. And uh, then I went back and studied a lot of like Joe Morello and drummers like that uh, for that kind of touch and feel approach. And uh, during high school, during my junior and senior years, I was pretty prominently involved with various uh, recording projects around town. Uh, with different musicians and acts, so that also really helped bring me up. After high school, I started a progressive rock band that uh, really kind of helped me uh, hone my technical chops. We reached way above what we were capable of, sometimes pulled it off, sometimes didn't, and uh, we uh, actually toured around the Pacific Northwest of the United States uh, a few times, which was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, it all just kind of, you know, added to... Uh, my growth as a musician around that time. Uh, that's also when I started playing the bass and a little bit of guitar and piano, and I started kind of learning uh, how the drums interact with those instruments and really started uh, to study, you know, how to write parts together rather than just write a whole bunch of different parts and have them come together as a song, but write on different instruments at the same time together. After that, I uh, kind of fell out of music. I got into a relationship with a girl who wound up becoming my ex-wife now, or she was really not a fan of music as a career. And despite what I had spent, you know, the last 10, 12 years of my life building, uh, she basically told me to get a, a real job. And so I did, and I kind of fell out of music for about uh, five or six years. And uh, we got married and divorced, and actually at that job is where I met Lady Freebeat. And uh, soon after that, I was feeling really restless, and I quit that job. And I started getting back into music, and Lady Freebeat was very, very supportive of that, and uh, made quite a few sacrifices uh, for me so that I was able to get back on a career path that I very much enjoyed. Um, and that's kind of where you guys came in. So, uh, yeah. I've been a musician all my life. I spent a good majority of my late teens and early 20s as a professional, uh, fell out of it for about five years or so, and have just had the greatest time getting back into it uh, with all of you. Uh, Genre-wise, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but my background is mostly in jazz and progressive rock. Curry says, have you tried Ableton and a launch pad? Uh, yeah, I actually own a launch pad and uh, I have played around with Ableton Live Lite before with it. I understand the power of it and everything and it is fun sometimes, but I just don't really uh, enjoy working with a DAW at a computer really. Wiggiz OBK says, have you heard about RetroKit's RK008 multi-track MIDI recorder? It looks interesting. I have not. Uh, is that something I should look into? Um, I'm always scouring my comments for new gear to look at, so I will have to uh, check that one out. JXPX9 says, Coming from a drummer's background, what made you decide to get into digital, electronic, gear, slash music? I can understand a drummer's appeal to the rhythmic aspects of drum machines, etc., but why synthesizers and not guitar or something else? Just curious. I'm sort of backwards and went from guitar to dabbling in synths. It all started kind of, uh, like I said, when I quit uh, my retail job, Lady Freebeat and I actually moved in with her mom and stepdad, 
and uh, I knew I wanted to get into music, back into music, but I had no space to work with. So uh, I found the PO33 and then the OPZ. And so that's where my uh, affiliation with electronic music really started from. It was basically out of necessity. I had no room to work with. So uh, I went with the gear that I could find and everything just kind of grew from there. And uh, I'm really happy that I was able to find uh, you know, those first two teenage engineering products that I picked up because they changed everything for me. They also say, another question is, do you find it hard to commit to a new video every day? Are topics hard to come by? Uh, not really. Um, sometimes I'll feel like I'm really in a creative rut where I just can't come up with a good idea no matter what I do. But when I am feeling creative, I find that the ideas just flow out of me nonstop. So I have a big document on my computer with a ton of different video ideas that I can pull from uh, whenever I'm not feeling creative. I'm probably gonna butcher your name, I'm sorry. Marcelo, Marcello, uh, Gonzalez, maybe? No, Gon... I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so bad at this. Uh, I have not had to read subscribers' names before. Uh, it says, congrats on 8K and keeping the energy to produce one video every day. I can't imagine the strength you have. I struggle to think on three different videos I could make. So for my question, I will be the least polite. What are the ways you make money for a living? Does YouTube alone pay your bills? Uh, that, that's a good question and more people need to talk about it. Um, YouTube is starting to pay. It doesn't quite pay for all my bills. Um, I do still work um, in music uh, as a percussion consultant, uh, which seems like a silly job, but it's one that I really, really like. So I either write drum parts for people or I help them write them and help them understand how to better their drum part writing, uh, which is something I'm really passionate about. Clearly, I do a lot of that on the channel as well. Uh, I also keep my monthly living expenses very, very low. I try to keep them as low as possible um, to help the channel, uh, you know, one day cover those. We're pretty close, actually. The channel is close to covering my monthly expenses. Um, so, uh, yeah, once we get to that point, it's just going to keep growing and uh, we'll be able to do more and more awesome stuff with the channel. I've got some really cool ideas uh, and I can't wait to be able to bring those to fruition uh, for all of you. Two-Eyed Boy says... Congrats on another milestone. If you could jam on any gear for a day, regardless of price slash rarity, what would it be? And that is such a good question. Um, I would honestly just have to say Neil Peart's Time Machine Tour drum kit, probably. I'm a huge Neil Peart fan. He shaped almost everything about me as a musician and uh, the chance to play on his drum kit would be, you know, uh, the chance of a lifetime. So that's that's got to be my answer. Phantom X says, congrats on 8K. I was just wondering about your thoughts on modular synthesis. It's a very expensive world that I'd love to get into, but I was wondering if you've ever tried it or even messed around with any of the free programs like VCV Rack. Congrats again on 8K. Um, I have messed around with VCV Rack. Um, I'm starting to learn that sound design just in itself is not something that really appeals to me right now uh, where I am on my journey with electronic music. So I don't really see myself getting into modular uh, for the time being anyway. Um, it's very, very expensive and some of the stuff you can get out of it is super cool, but it also looks like it takes up a ton of room and I just have an absolutely tiny little studio space. Uh, so it's just not worth it for me yet to get into. Maybe someday I will, maybe I'll have a little modular rig, but for right now, the, uh, Behringer Model D's little, uh, inputs and outputs up top are all the modular gear I need. And finally, Kaz says, I wanted to know what you do for a living outside of YouTube and how do you balance your work with the daily content? You make it look so effortless. Uh, well, thank you. Um, like I said earlier, I am a percussion consultant, uh, and that actually does free me up to spend quite a bit of time on the YouTube channel. And also, like I mentioned, um, when it comes to coming up with new video topics every day, some days I'm feeling more creative than others, and I take advantage of that when I can. So if I'm feeling creative, I find that I can crank out three to four videos in one day. Uh, as opposed to if I'm not feeling creative, and even then I try to crank out one video. When I first started the channel, I was working seven days a week uh, to get out a, a new video every single day. But now that my gear has gotten better, my process has become more streamlined. Um, I'm able to work Monday through Friday uh, on the channel and as a percussion consultant, and I'm able still to take the weekends off and be with uh, Lady Freebeat. So uh, yeah, it's slowly turning more and more into a real job and it's starting to take over um, 
from my real job right now, which is really cool. I'm very blessed to be able to do that. And that is all thanks to you guys. So a huge thank you to every single one of you who have ever clicked the subscribe button, given a video a thumbs up or thumbs down, shared a video with a friend or family member, and even just watched the videos. It means the world to me. And you are the reason that this channel has been uh, at least mildly successful and uh, is continuing to grow. So here's to the future. I can't wait to see where we can go together. Uh, I guess I will see you all at 9k. Thank you so very much for being here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Ring that notification bell. You guys know the drill. Again, thank you so much for 8,000 subscribers. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.